Beethoven. I want to, when I talk to um, friends that maybe they're not regular musicians or even concert goers about Beethoven, I talk to them and I say, this guy, you have to think historically, he was an absolute rock star. He was somebody that people packed the halls and they went nuts. I mean, it was like going to a Rolling Stones concert because his concert had a level of energy that hadn't been seen in classical music up to that time. One of the ways I want to demonstrate that, I, I like to do demonstrations of the first movement because at the end of the concert we will have forgotten everything about the first movement because of the chorus and the soloist and everything else. But he sets the stage with this very quiet note. And here it is just as a solid note. Right, and normally they won't scoop into it like that. And, uh, but he doesn't give you just a single solid note. And he doesn't, he could give you a tremolo, which was fairly common at that time. But he doesn't do that either. He wants rhythmic power and energy. And he wants you to feel it from the downbeat. So instead, here's what he gives him. Now, maybe I'm extra sensitive. That raises a hair on the back of my neck. When you hear that rhythm, and then what's coming, and just a few bars later, the orchestra comes in, and here's a guy that at this time is deaf, but he certainly could feel it when he heard this. Okay, one more example at the end of the piece. And I have to tell you, you watch the musicians. Just pick out somebody and watch how intently they concentrate. And believe me, it's out of fear. It's out of total fear that they will get lost and mess up. Beethoven doesn't care about the players. He doesn't care about the singers. To him, it's energy and music. And so at the end of the, uh, let's see, this is letter S. Just strings. Let's just play eighth notes here. Write it letter S. Now, that's not particularly interesting, but here's what Beethoven does to add energy to it. Right, it's just crazy. And when we add all the other, well, let's go without strings. The rest of the instruments are at letter S. Okay, that's the sound. So there's only two things going on here. Now with the strings and the winds. Okay, there's nothing complicated about it. He is just hammering those themes out for you that you've been hearing all the first movement. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. The second movement I don't need to talk about. If you're over 50, you recognize it as a theme from the NBC Nightly News. And if you're under, you probably don't care. <laughs> Now, you're welcome to applaud after the first one. I'll go without the microphone. It's so degraded to drag it back and forth. Um, so, we're at the one island of contemplation in this center. Everything else is hectic, power-driven, and, and just kind of crazy. The third movement is just absolute beauty, beauty of line and design. Um, but then when we arrive at the fourth movement, a lot of us in this day and age, we don't appreciate what, this is a masterpiece composition. It was revolutionary at the end of an instrumental symphony to bring in a chorus and then a choir for just this little bit. But if you read in your program notes about what was going on in Europe, and if you think about what happened in Egypt this week, this is what this music is about. Whether mankind and our states are going to be ruled by a few, or whether we're going to live with democracy and equality. And so many people listen to this now just as a musical masterpiece, but it was a social rallying cry like, we shall overcome. I mean, this is, the, they're fighting against the monarch. So that's something really important to keep in mind. And the opening chord of the fourth movement, we just finished what, what should be very beautiful if we play it well. The third movement, beautiful sounds and 
then this is what you're hit in the face with at the opening of the mouth. Come on. <laughs> so that's how we work. 